Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I'm here with Dyer Supplier to dye some self-striping yarn. This is a technique that is a lot of fun because we're going big and using a really big skein so that way we can create extremely long color repeats. Today we will be using the Dyer Supplier 8020 sock yarn. This yarn is 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and let's go get to it! To make a really long skein, you can wind your yarn between two chairs, use a really, really long PVC pipe nitty knotty, or use something called a warping board. This is a frame with a lot of pegs and you can wind the yarn back and forth on it to create a really long skein. I constructed this warping board out of four railing balusters, um, some five inch pieces of half inch diameter wooden dowels, and really we just drilled in a bunch of half inch holes um, along either side and used some wood glue to secure it. Two of the balusters have the half inch dowel dr um, drilled and then glued into either end with three pegs um, on the side for support. The other two have nine pegs fairly evenly spaced and then two holes drilled through the side so that way we can slide it onto the ends of these other boards. Believe it or not, this was really easy to construct, especially if you have the drill bits and some sandpaper and stuff already on hand. To wind the yarn onto the warping board, I find it easiest to start with the yarn in a yarn cake versus being on a swift because it just doesn't get caught in, as you change your speeds. I'm going to start by wrapping the yarn around one of the pegs a few times and just tying a tiny slip knot. And now we're going to start winding. I am not going to use this to make the largest skein I possibly can. Each of the balusters is three feet long, so you can imagine that we're making a pretty wide skein. So I am winding this back and forth and I'm going back and forth in the same direction each time. The one thing to note is I'm always going under on either end and this will separate, believe it or not, into an intact skein at the end. So again, each of these wooden balusters is about three feet long. So what we are creating here is one, two, three, five, I would say six, probably at least 12 yards um, since this is going back and forth. But you can see I'm not using up all of the real estate. I could go a lot longer if I wanted to have more color stripes or thicker stripes for whatever project I'm making. Now the yarn is all wound onto our warping board and we can go to take it off. Starting at this back end, I'm going to take a removable zip tie and secure it relatively tightly. I'll loosen it at some point, but this is the first tie going on. And then as we take this off, just going one sort of spoke at a time, you can go through and separate the skein. As I go through, I will add some acrylic butterfly ties to the skein so that way things stay separate and ordered. And I try to add about one per yard. I do this one peg at a time just by keeping a hand on each side and I can slowly pull it apart. As we come down to that beginning end, this is the one place where things can feel a little tricky because you're like, oh wait, this feels like a little tangled. Um, but I find if I pull this off and pull that end that I butterflied off, you see things look like a little looped just with some light tugs, it resolves itself nicely. Now that we are done, we can disassemble 
this warping board so we can store this flat. The end result is this really, really long skein of yarn, which we can use to dye really long color sections, i.e. a self-striping yarn. I pre-soaked the yarn in some plain tap water for a couple of hours, but 20 to 30 minutes would be sufficient. I wanted to go with fall inspired colors, so I created a crimson and this burnt orange slash brown color. Um, I mixed these out of a bunch of Jacquard 1% stock solutions. Um, I used Fire Red, Gunmetal, and Aztec Gold for the red, and then for the burnt orange I used Aztec Gold, Chestnut, and Bright Yellow, plus a tiny bit of this red mixture. I'm not going to use 100% of what I mixed for the yarn itself, um, but these are the stocks that I will be drawing from to create our color. Here in my dedicated dye pot, I have eight cups of cool tap water and no acid. I am going to start with the paler color today and add two tablespoons of the more orange mixture that we created and stir things up really well. I marked the approximate midpoint of the long skein with a zip tie to help me gauge how much of it I need to put into the pot. And with everything cool and with no acid added yet, I'm going to start adding things to the pot. Now granted, what we see here is not what the final color saturation on this section would be, but this helps you gauge how much color, how much more color you might want to add. And I do want to add more color. Um, I am going to add another two tablespoons of this color and continue to stir it up with the yarn in here. I don't mind if the color is not perfectly even, um, but be thankful for all those extra ties we added so that way things won't get too tangled. But I am trying to keep stuff together. This skein is so long that I have half in the pot and then the rest is sort of going down into another container off the side. And so once this side has been dyed, then we can dye the other side. Now I'm going to turn on the heat and start heating things up. Make sure the yarn is nice and spread out here in the pan. And as things are starting to warm up, I'm going to go ahead and add one tablespoon of white vinegar so that way our color can start striking. Now I'm going to heat things stirring occasionally for 15 minutes. The main reason why I wanted to start with the least saturated color today is so that way we can reuse the same dye bath. Um, and so we would do the color first that would exhaust faster. But now I'm going to remove this and set it aside. We did get some color beyond where I placed um, this zip tie, but uh, the next color is so saturated that I don't think it's going to have a huge impact. I want to let things cool a little bit before we go to the next color, but I am moving the zip tie onto this more burnt orange terracotta color um, just so that way I have a marker for where our midpoint is and this helps me determine how much of the yarn needs to go into the pot and things like that. So I'm going to try to keep the zip tie just above the surface of the water with our next stage. The main reason why I want to let the dye bath cool off before we start dyeing the other side, not a ton, just a bit, is to allow us to keep some even color absorption. I'm starting off with a quarter cup of this color and yeah I think I definitely want to add more. So there's still a tiny bit left over but we've got a half a cup of that red color that we mixed up. After about 20 minutes the dye bath is definitely cooler than it was before. And I'm now going to add our yarn in and then bring this edge just 
to about that tip. And again, we want to move things around so we can check on our color saturation. Again, things will get darker with time, but I am going to add the rest of this red dye that I mixed because I don't mind if things end up even deeper than they are currently. And I am just stirring this up. There'll still be some tonal nature here, but this will make things a little more even. I'm going to turn on the heat and start heating things up. Since this color is more saturated this time, it might take longer than 15 minutes, and we might need to add more vinegar, but we will examine everything in about 15 minutes. And once again, the other half of the yarn is out sitting in a pan, so it won't get submerged. We'll be back in 15 minutes. After about 15 minutes, almost all of the color has absorbed, and I am now gonna add another three tablespoons of white vinegar and gently stir things up and you can see we just have a little bit of some yellow left over um, and I'm actually going to turn the heat off and leave the yarn in here to cool completely so that it can absorb that excess color um, and set this beautiful red. Once the yarn is completely cool we can remove it from the pot. Of course, if your color is cleared, you can remove it sooner. But we can remove it from the pot and set it aside. Here is our gorgeous fall inspired, feeling very Thanksgiving actually, with like pumpkin pie and cranberry sauce, um, our beautiful self striping colorway. Um, once everything is cool completely, then we can wash it. Let's carefully wash our yarn. If you are worried about one of your colors bleeding, then you might want to wash the two colors separately. Um, but even if the red were to bleed, it would not harm our second color very much. I am taking great care to not tangle things up. I'm going to add a little bit of some clear dish soap. Sometimes with the addition of soap is when you might see some bleeding, but make sure you're using cool water and that can help. And yes, the water is clear. All of the color is in our yarn. So now I'm going to rinse out that soap and then hang the yarn up to dry so that way we can reskein it into something that's a little more manageably sized. <laughs> Here is the finished dry skein, which is still extremely ordered, and you can see there's tonal variation within the colors, but I think that'll add some fun to our stripes. The two stripes are pretty close to the same size, with the red being slightly longer. The skein is so long that it would be difficult to go and knit directly from this. So we are going to need to rewind it into a more manageably sized skein. And there's a few different ways you could go about that. Depending on the length of your skein, you can either position it between two chairs, or you can put the skein back onto a warping board, spread out so that way you can easily unravel it without tangling it, and this will use a smaller physical area for the skein to occupy. This particular skein is so long that the two chair method would be a little more difficult, but again, you do not need to have a warping board to dye self-striping yarn. It's merely a tool that will make things a little easier. The yarn is going up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, and then back around. And so it's a fairly easy loop to go through to unravel the yarn onto your Nitty Knotty. However you decide to do it, eventually all of the yarn will be on your Nitty Knotty. And then it is manageable to store or cake up so you can go and knit with it, or crochet or weave or whatever it is you'd like to do. This is a different configuration than I used to wind the long skein originally because I thought it would be helpful to have things a bit more spread out for the unraveling. 
um, but I do know that some people prefer to wind their skeins something like this. Rather than going back and forth, like I demonstrated at the beginning, you can go you know, up and down and then around, and then you don't really need to worry about the direction of your pegs as much. Having a lot of extra pegs on your warping board gives you a flexibility to put it back on in a number of different ways, um, whatever works best for you. So now we've gone from our massively long skein into a more manageable four foot skein. Depending on what you want to make in the end, you can calculate the amount of yardage that goes into one row of your project and use that to back calculate how long you need each color section to be to get the striping pattern that you want. And something like a warping board can really help you get there because we did not use it to its fullest potential. There is, There are more ways that we could wind it to create even longer skeins. Just the longer it gets, it starts to get a little more hard to manage, so keep that in mind. I knit a swatch out of this yarn to demonstrate how big the stripes are from our approximately 12 yarn skein dyed in two colors. I used 40 stitches on US size 2 knitting needles and each of the stripes is about 10 rows wide. Now if you're going to do socks they would not quite be 10 rounds but um, they are nicely sized stripes. I am really excited with this fall inspired self striping colorway that we created today. Now that you understand how you can make a self striping yarn, you can tweak it. To adjust the size of your stripes, you can adjust the length of your large skein. You can even go and knit up a sample, unravel it to measure the length of the yarn for a given round. So that way you can calculate exactly how long you want your stripes to be for your project. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you want to see me explore with a few more self-striping techniques, you can find me on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. There will be a link in the video description. As you start your own yarn dyeing journeys, head over to dyersupplier.com. They are adding new yarn bases all the time that are affordably priced and ethically sourced. And there are even some wholesale options. So make sure you go and check out everything they have to offer. Even all 40 Jacquard Asin dye colors. So it's a perfect one-stop shop for your yarn, your dye, and then you're ready to go to create beautiful colors like this. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.